Who hasn't heard of the 1960s musical legend, Tom Jones? With his deep voice, sexy swagger, and a heart throb to many, he captivated hearts worldwide. Yet, it's surprising how this stage-commanding hitmaker went from sensational to a man struggling neck-deep in a roller coaster of hardships and struggles in his later years. How did Tom end up living the nothing gold can stay saying? In this video, prepare to uncover the untold story of the challenging and reclusive life that the once popular iconic Tom Jones lives, who is now over 80 years old. Let's get started. Tom Jones' Birth From his infancy, Tom had always been a songbird. He had always been attuned to melodies around him even before his brain could grasp the magic of music. On the 7th of June 1940, a baby boy was born into the Woodward family. He was named Thomas John Woodward, later to be known as Tom Jones by the world. Jones came to life at 57 Kingsland Terrace in the Treforest village of Pontypridd, County Glamorganshire, South Wales. He was born into an English family, the son of Freda Jones and Thomas Woodward. Snore. Growing up, life wasn't rosy for Tom and his family as they lived a fairly average life, getting by with what they could. His father worked as a miner at the coal mines of the Rhonda Valley, and there were no reports of his mother working. Despite the financial sufferings that his family were encountering, little Tom kept himself happy by singing. When he was 12 years old, he was struck with tuberculosis. Tom recounted many years later that that period was one of the worst periods of his life as he spent two agonizing years in bed recovering from the illness. During years of being on the sickbed, listening to music and drawing became a comforting companion. They acted as a therapeutic tool, easing the physical and emotional toll of being unwell. Tom's love for singing knew no bounds at his early age, taking any opportunity that put him under the spotlight. His passion for singing became a spontaneous expression that he would show off at family gatherings, weddings, and in his school choir. Singing in the school choir greatly built Tom's confidence and was the earliest form of musical training he got. One can say that those seemingly little training sessions were the little building blocks that helped to build him into the maestro he is today. Despite destiny setting Tom Jones on a path of excellence from the very beginning, what led him to the broken life he now leads in the twilight of his years? Stay tuned until the end as we reveal what you need to know. Tom Jones, Rise to Fame As an adolescent, Tom didn't have any interest in studying, let alone sports. Being part of the school choir was the only thing that motivated him and kept him under the four walls of the school. And of course, his melodic voice didn't go unnoticed as he gained popularity in high school for his beautiful sound. One day, when Tom was 15 years old, he lost total interest in school and dropped out. In order to make ends meet, he worked hard on a variety of manual jobs to get by and help his family, which included singing in the clubs at night. As the years went by, Tom Jones kept working on his voice and training himself to be better, due to his love for that art and also, more importantly, because he earned from his performances. Today, if you listen to Tom Jones, you would describe his sound as a powerful baritone and much more described as full-throated and robust. However, Tom revealed that he had to transition from a tenor to a baritone voice. Why did he make that change? Was it a change due to personal growth or lack of confidence? Reminiscing about those days, Tom stated in an interview, What you lose on the top end, you gain on the bottom end. I used to hit a top C when I was young. Now it's a B flat. In 1963, Jones stepped into the spotlight as the frontman for Tommy Scott and the Senators, a Welsh beat group. Their local success as a band spread across the length and breadth of South Wales, making them the center of attention. Despite the fact that the group recorded solo tracks with the likes of Joe Meek in 1964, their journey to success faced several setbacks. Things seemed to take a positive turn for them when the producer of the popular Decca Records, Peter Sullivan, 
discovered them in a club later that year, leading them to manager Phil Solomon, but the partnership was fleeting. These twists and turns that Jones experienced in his budding career laid the foundation for the legendary vocalist he would become. The group continued taking gigs and playing around South Wales until one day Gordon Mills met Tom. Gordon Mills was a successful London-based music industry manager and songwriter who fell in love with Tom's rich voice. Gordon reached out to him with a proposal to change his career on the condition that Gordon would manage Tom's career. Tom thought hard about it and understood that following Gordon meant that he would have to leave his group. He would trust Gordon with stirring the trajectory of his career. There were so many uncertainties, yet so many prospects at the same time. Tom Jones accepted Gordon's request to become his manager, and that was one of the best decisions he ever made in his lifetime. Later on in this video, you would find out how Gordon managed Tom Jones and two other artists and made them highly successful musical icons in their time. Gordon Mills unveils Tom Jones to the world. Gordon Mills wanted to introduce the young and talented Tom Jones to the world, but wanted it to be in a unique and spectacular way. He went to his drawing board and had a brain blast moment. Just recently, in 1963, an Academy Award-winning movie was making waves and was loved by all. The name of the movie was Tom Jones. The character was a classic hero, and Gordon believed that the movie would best bring attention to his latest musical talent. In order to exploit the success of the movie to their advantage, Gordon Mills gave Thomas John Woodward, the name he is popularly known as today, Tom Jones. According to Mills, when he met Tom Jones, deep down he knew that he had found the man who would help him make his fortune and was excited about the idea as he journeyed back to London. But why the deep interest in Tom Jones? Was there something else behind all that deep interest? Actually, Gordon Mill had no interest in managing Tom. When he heard Tom sing, he knew that he was going to be great only if he had a better reach. So he made up his mind to make sure his voice was heard by a wider audience. Being a singer himself and having experienced early success in the 50s, according to Mills, when he laid his eyes on Jones, he saw something in him that he didn't have. Gordon was moved by the harsh reality of Tom. He realized that despite Tom's rich talent, not that many outside of South Wales seemed intent on listening to him, he had broken teeth and laborers build, proved a turnoff to the female fans, and there were countless fruitless auditions and months spent ecking out an existence on the breadline before success came in the form of a song Mills had co-penned. Tom Jones's Breakthrough Tom Jones indeed owed it all to Gordon Mills, but his music breakthrough wouldn't have happened if he hadn't been humble enough to let Gordon Mills lead and also trust his decisions at every step of the way. In their musical relationship, Gordon held the reins in all regards. He was in charge of orchestrating everything from song selection to arrangements, and even taking charge of the recording process. Surprisingly, Tom Jones found joy in relinquishing control, letting Mills guide his creative journey. Gordon finally secured a recording deal at DECA for Tom. Tom Jones signed a recording contract with the record label and the journey to stardom kicked off. Tom Jones' first released single with DECA was Chills and Fever, a less than stellar debut. To the dismay of the team, the song didn't exactly set the charts ablaze as they expected, but DECA and Gordon weren't ready to throw in the towel just yet. And that was the life-changing moment for Tom Jones. Gordon Mills had co-written a song, and it was intended for the vocal stylings of British singer Sandy Shaw. However, in a surprising turn of events, Shaw declined the opportunity to bring this song to life. Tom Jones, who was relatively unknown then, took the opportunity to hop on the song and etched his powerful vocals onto the track. Little did anyone know at that moment, but this decision marked a pivotal juncture in Jones's career. That song was Tom Jones's hit song, It's Not Unusual. It was the instant classic that gave Tom his breakthrough and served as his inaugural hit single. Tom Jones stepped into the limelight, setting the stage for an illustrious journey through the charts and solidifying the song's place in the annals of musical history. 
Imagine if he had not made that decision to try out the song. According to Sandy Shaw, she was so impressed with Tom's delivery that she told Gordon Mill that she would never have ever been able to sing the song the way he had done. The trajectory of It's Not Unusual took a global turn when offshore pirate radio station Radio Caroline threw its weight behind promoting the track. This strategic move catapulted Tom Jones into the limelight during the following year, marking a zenith in his career and firmly establishing him as one of the foremost voices of the British invasion. In the early months of 1965, It's Not Unusual achieved the pinnacle of success by securing the coveted number one spot in the United Kingdom and landing in the top ten in the United States. This chart-topping triumph not only solidified Jones's standing as a global sensation, but also paved the way for a series of significant opportunities. During that prolific year, Jones collaborated with his manager Gordon Mills, who skillfully garnered music theme song deals for Tom. Among these cinematic endeavors, Tom lent his magnetic voice to the James Bond film Thunderball, adding a touch of allure to the iconic franchise. Additionally, Gordon orchestrated Jones's involvement in recording What's New Pussycat, a composition by the legendary duo Burt Bacharach and Hal David. Interestingly, Jones initially harbored skepticism about What's New Pussycat when it was first proposed to him. Describing the offer as a sort of a backhanded compliment, he candidly admitted feeling conflicted, stating, I've got to have you, but this is the song. It took persuasive efforts from Burt Bacharach to convince Tom to embrace the song, ultimately leading to another noteworthy chapter in the singer's illustrious career. Tom Jones's career seemed to be taking a positive turn at each passing moment. In 1966, the music industry crowned Tom Jones with the prestigious Grammy Award for Best New Artist, a testament to his undeniable talent. A fascinating moment occurred during a filming at Paramount Studios in Hollywood in 1965. Tom Jones had a meeting with none other than the legendary Elvis Presley. It was a vivid memory etched in Jones's mind, as Presley serenaded him with the soulful rendition of With These Hands as he strolled towards him from the film set. This chance encounter evolved into a genuine bond, and the bond between the two musical titans blossomed into a lasting friendship. He really seemed to be living the life he never could have envisioned. There was love everywhere he turned to, but did he have love at home? Tom Jones's love life. Tom Jones had always been a married man all his life. He was one of the few that married from a very young age and stayed married. The legendary singer's journey through love began in the halls of high school, where he found he met the lady he believed was his one true love. Her name was Melinda Rose Linda Trenchard. Their love story unfolded in the four corners of the school. The two lovers were of the same age, and soon, when they were both 15 years old, Melinda became pregnant. Could this be the major reason Tom Jones dropped out of school? Their journey into matrimony wasn't conventional, as they embraced the responsibilities of parenthood early on. A profound connection led them down the aisle at the tender age of 16, a decision made more prominent by the impending arrival of their son, Mark. Tom took on all the right responsibilities he needed to take to care for his new family, and he did. Tom stated true to the live words he had said to Melinda, and on the 2nd of March in 1957, they exchanged vows on marking the commencement of a union that would withstand the tests of time. The union wasn't just a commitment to each other, it was a testament to their resilience and devotion in the face of unexpected challenges. As the symphony of their lives played out, Tom and Melinda navigated the highs and lows of matrimony finding strength in their shared experiences. Their bond deepened as time went by. She watched him go from a manual job worker to a superstar, and their harmonious partnership was able to weather the storms of life. However, fate dealt a cruel hand when Melinda succumbed to cancer on the 10th of April 2016, leaving behind a legacy of love and endurance.
Tom was left with a heartache that became a poignant melody, echoing the bittersweet notes of a love story that transcended the boundaries of time. Despite the deep love the high school sweetheart shared, Tom was never a loyal husband to Melinda. According to those who knew the couple personally, it was revealed that Melinda was in the know of all Tom's affairs, yet she chose to stay with me. The poignant portrait Melinda painted was of someone ensnared in an emotional trap and web of emotional blackmails. Tom Jones knew how loyal his wife would be to him and how unwavering her support had always been so it was very easy for him to capitalize on it and continue his numerous affairs. But why couldn't Lady Linda, as she was fondly called, just leave? It was asserted that Tom Jones's matrimony held strong because of Melinda's steadfast belief in the sanctity of marriage vows. She strongly held on to the for better or worse part of the marriage vows and stuck to it. That served as the cornerstone of her character. Former bandmate of Tom Jones, Vernon Hopkins, had a detailed account of the love that Tom and Melinda shared in a book chronicling his experiences with Sir Tom. Mr. Hopkins contended that Melinda's commitment to her husband inadvertently granted the highly celebrated musician a metaphorical license to thrill. As the narrative unfolded, Hopkins painted a vivid picture of Melinda's gradual withdrawal into a self-imposed seclusion within her own gilded cage. The invisible chains of insecurity bound her thoughts, and she was constantly haunted by her thoughts, daily living with the perpetual question of whom her husband might be entangled with. At the climax of his fame, Tom Jones found himself entangled in a web of passionate encounters, this could be as a result of his personal interests in becoming a cheat or due to the pressure of him taking up the persona of a sex symbol to all. We are going to talk about that later in the video. The sensational musician once admitted to a staggering affair count, claiming up to 250 liaisons with adoring groupies each year. Among the star-studded tapestry of his conquests were renowned names such as singer Mary Wilson, presenter Charlotte Laws, and former Miss World Marjorie Wallace. Yet the echoes of his romantic escapades extended beyond the glamorous circles into the realms of Hollywood darkness, all while married to his wife. Surprisingly, she never filed for divorce. Maybe she did threaten divorce. We would never know. In 2008, actress Cassandra Peterson, known as the bewitching Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, unveiled a daunting chapter in her life. She disclosed that her initiation into adulthood as a woman was through Tom Jones. For her, it was an experience that scarred her. She recounted that the experience was so painful and horrible to the extent that it left her in need of stitches. What type of intensity was that? In all of the great singer's escapades, one day, he hit a poignant chapter that unfolded during his U.S. tour in October 1987. As always, he was always having flings. However, this time, he had a fleeting connection with a top model, Catherine Berkery. This encounter bore unexpected consequences when she discovered she carried the seed of a new life. Tom Jones was devastated by this. He had no idea how to take the news and he lived in denial. More importantly, he didn't know how to break the news to his wife before someone else did. So he did what he could do. A legal battle punctuated by DNA testing ensued in a bid for him to prove that the child wasn't his. In 1989, the U.S. court concluded the case. It was declared and confirmed that Tom Jones was the father of the child Catherine Berkery was expecting. Strangely, but not surprising, Jones continued to contest this paternal revelation up until 2008, when he finally admitted the truth. However, his acknowledgement was devoid of paternal interest, leaving the curtain drawn on any possibility of connecting with his son. That son from Tom Jones and Catherine Berkery's brief sexual relationship is the aspiring singer Jonathan Berkery. Tom Jones vowed never to meet Jonathan. Before the death of Melinda, she never made an official statement on Tom Jones' affairs. 
However, those affiliated with her have mentioned that she always had a calm demeanor to all his scandals and affairs. For Melinda, she believes that as long as her husband keeps coming back to her and no one is harming him, he's always hers. Tom always did come back to her. The superstar once said, and I quote, the only real thing is my marriage, and as long as we can both hold it together, as long as my wife can put up with me, I know I'll be there. Melinda definitely took her vows seriously, because indeed, only Deeth did them apart. Tom Jones as a sex symbol. What drove Tom Jones to that type of life of infidelity? One that cost the mental well-being of a son who is the only innocent person in the mix. We can trace this back to Tom Jones's reputation as a sex symbol. Tom Jones was recognized by fans as a prominent male sex symbol of the 60s and 70s. He exuded an unmistakable allure of sexuality, often clad in form-hugging attire, including painted on slacks and an unbuttoned shirt. He embodied a captivating blend of charisma and sensuality. The truth was that that was just a brand Tom Jones and his manager wanted to sell for the public, which they did really well. Gordon Mills was the mastermind who honed Tom Jones's image with exceptional finesse. One can say that he was the one who rebranded him as a sex symbol. When Tom first came to the limelight, his authentic life as a father and husband remained concealed. He was initially introduced to the public as a 22-year-old single man working in the South Wales mines. When he catapulted to fame in 1965, this narrative was far from reality. In truth, he was a married man with a seven-year-old child when he achieved stardom, and the mines had never been a part of his life. The coroner has attested that he has had countless knickers thrown at him from star-struck women over his years of performing. According to the crooner, he doesn't have a collection of them, because he isn't a pervert. The first time a woman ever threw her knickers at him was back in 1968, at the Copacabana in New York, while performing. He recalled that he was profusely sweating during that performance, and suddenly, a woman stood up, raised her dress, removed her drawers, and handed it to him across the stage. To the joy of the woman, he used her drawers to wipe his sweat. That act forever sealed his image of sensuality in the hearts of all. Tom's Fading Health A sad reality for the aging star. Tom Jones was once known for his energetic and lively performances, but these days the 80-year-old singer seems to be slowing down. As Tom ages, his health has started to deteriorate making it difficult for him to keep up with the demanding schedule of touring and performing. Tom revealed recently that he has had operations on both of his hips and spoke about how he was struggling to stand on stage to perform his songs. His first hip operation took place in 2017 and the other in 2022. His voice is also not as powerful as it once was, though he can still belt out his famous songs, albeit in a lower register. Some fans have noted that Tom's shows seem shorter and he takes more breaks in between songs. It's clear the Welsh icon's advancing years are catching up with him. Sadly, Tom's physical decline means he may not be able to continue performing and touring for much longer. Though his mind remains sharp, his body is telling him it's time to start winding down his career. Tom affirmed that despite his health conditions, he won't be retiring. Tom has also overhauled his diet over recent years in a bid to keep his health in check. He has cut down on drinking alcohol and adopted a caveman, or paleo diet, which sees dieters focus on eating lean meats, fruits, fish, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. The lonely life Tom Jones lives at 80 years. Sir Tom Jones, the iconic Welsh singer, now at 80, lives a life that, despite external glamour, bears the weight of profound loneliness. His story diverges from the public narrative, revealing a solitude masked by the bright lights of fame. Once celebrated as one of the most unsubtle male sex symbols of the 60s and 70s, Tom Jones's personal life often remained in the shadows. The recent sale of his 6.5 million Los Angeles mansion, following the death of his beloved wife, Melinda, in 2016, marked a poignant shift. Tom, 
now residing in a flat in London, made this transition at Melinda's insistence, a woman with whom he shared 59 years of marriage. The Mediterranean-style house, adorned with memories and shared history, became a poignant reminder of a chapter forever closed. However, Tom's connection with his son, Mark, serves as a contrasting anchor in the sea of solitude. Mark, now Tom's manager, played a pivotal role in reshaping his father's career after the passing of Tom's first manager, Gordon Mills. Beyond the professional realm, their bond goes beyond the conventional father-son relationship. Fans often note the striking resemblance between them, with Tom acknowledging that they are more like brothers than father and son. Tom's decision to return to the UK was not solely geographical, it was an emotional return prompted by Melinda's homesickness and, later, her illness. His profound dedication to family, emphasized by his refusal to become an American citizen, highlights the complexity of his life. While Tom Jones may have been a symbol of flamboyance and charisma on stage, off stage, his life is intertwined with moments of solitude and a poignant connection with his son. The flat in London, devoid of the grandeur of his previous abode, becomes a canvas upon which the nuances of his personal life unfold. At 80, Tom Jones navigates the corridors of his memories, finding solace in the enduring bond with his son as he continues to grapple with the echoes of a love that once filled his mansion in the hills above Los Angeles. The echo of Tom Jones mistakes in the solitude of Tom Jones' life at 80, there exists a profound loneliness masked by the glittering facade of fame. As he grapples with the weight of age and the physical toll of a demanding career, the echoes of his personal mistakes reverberate in the corridors of solitude. The way he juxtaposes his legendary status against the stark reality of isolation unveils a poignant narrative of a life lived in the shadows. Once celebrated as an endearing sex symbol, a haunting shadow of his mistakes follows the path of Tom's existence. The fidelity of Lady Linda, who stood by him through thick and thin, raises questions about the emotional toll of loyalty in the face of betrayal. In the pursuit of a persona, Tom Jones unwittingly left a trail of scars, perhaps unaware of the profound impact his actions would have on those closest to him. Tom Jones's Reflections As the years rolled by, Tom Jones found himself increasingly introspective, grappling with the weight of his past and the choices that shaped his life. Despite the adulation and success that had crowned his career, there lingered a poignant sense of longing for something more meaningful. It was a journey inward, a pilgrimage to confront the echoes of his mistakes and the shadows they cast upon his legacy. The solitude of his London flat became a sanctuary for introspection, where the cacophony of fame gave way to the whispers of reflection. Amidst the mementos of a lifetime spent upon the stage, Tom Jones embarked on a voyage of self-discovery, peeling back the layers of his persona to unearth the man beneath the legend. It was a journey fraught with complexity as he confronted the ghosts of his past with a courage born of necessity, the betrayals, the infidelities, and the scars they left upon his soul emerged from the depths of memory, demanding reconciliation and redemption. For Tom Jones, the pursuit of fame had exacted a heavy toll, leaving behind a trail of broken hearts and shattered dreams. Yet, amidst the shadows, there flickered a glimmer of hope, the enduring bond with his son, Mark. As he navigated the labyrinth of his emotions, Tom found solace in the unconditional love they shared, a beacon of light amidst the darkness of regret. In the quiet moments of reflection, Tom Jones began to make peace with his past, embracing the flaws and imperfections that had shaped his journey. He sought forgiveness where he could, reaching out to those he had wronged in a bid to mend the fractures of his soul. It was a journey of healing, of rediscovery, and ultimately, of redemption. As he emerged from the crucible of self-examination, 
Tom Jones found himself transformed, a phoenix rising from the ashes of his mistakes to embrace the promise of a new beginning. For Tom Jones, the road ahead was uncertain, fraught with challenges and obstacles yet to be faced. But armed with the wisdom of experience and the clarity of introspection, he stepped forward with renewed purpose, ready to embrace the journey that lay ahead. In the twilight of his years, Tom Jones found solace in the quiet moments of reflection, embracing the complexities of his past and the promise of a brighter future. And as he gazed out upon the horizon, he knew that whatever trials lay ahead, he would face them with courage, grace, and an unwavering determination to live life on his own terms. For Tom Jones, the journey was far from over. It was just beginning. And with each step forward, he embraced the promise of tomorrow, ready to write the next chapter in the storied tale of his life. As the days turned into nights and the seasons shifted, Tom Jones continued to reflect upon the myriad experiences that had shaped his journey. He delved deep into the recesses of his memories, revisiting the pivotal moments that had defined his path. From the highs of his musical triumphs to the lows of personal struggles, every twist and turn of his life story was laid bare before him. Through it all, Tom Jones remained steadfast in his commitment to growth and self-improvement. He sought out new perspectives, engaging in conversations with friends, family, and colleagues, eager to gain fresh insights into his own journey. He explored new avenues of creativity, experimenting with different artistic mediums to express the depths of his soul. Yet, amidst the ceaseless quest for self-discovery, Tom Jones never lost sight of the importance of living in the present moment. He savored the simple pleasures of life, the warmth of the sun on his face, the gentle rustle of leaves in the breeze, the laughter of loved ones gathered around him. In these moments of quiet contentment, he found a sense of peace and fulfillment that transcended the fleeting highs of fame and fortune. Thanks for watching. For a more thrilling story, click now on the next video that pops up on your screen.